I should not have been a successful college student. I should not have been able to get into medical school, but I did. I became, right, the top 1.7% of applicants who get into Stanford Medical School. But stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right, get at it. No excuses, just dominate. Cat Williams said, when I was first coming up, I was broke, I didn't have anything. And I, I felt I was funny, but I recognized I wasn't as successful as I wanted to be as a comedian. I encourage you guys all to do this. He sat down and he said, listen, I wanna be the best comedian. I'm clearly not, cause they ain't paying me, <laughs> right? And so he made a list of 300 comedians that he felt were more successful than him. And from those 300 comedians, he watched each of their specials or each of their routines 10 times a piece. And it may not be the exact numbers, but he said he took all that and he studied it and he took detailed notes about how they were getting laughs, how they were getting different altered laughs at different places and how you could modify things and the commonalities and the patterns of what made a successful comedian. And then he took all that and then he patterned himself out of all the most successful ingredients of these comedians. When he said that, I had to sit back. I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I'd be trying to tell you guys. I became that. And then from Stanford Medical School, I got into one of the top anesthesia programs in the country, right? And then after that, right, I haven't applied for a job ever, <laughs> but I still be getting job offers. Why? Because I'm an excellent anesthesiologist, right? How does that happen? How do you rise to the top like that? It's because I said to myself, when my counselor told me that I wasn't on track to graduate, that she thought I was going to flunk out of college, that I, I would never get into medical school, when she told me that, I had an option. I could quit or I could get better. How do we get better? We study those that are better than us. And to do that, it's a big step because for a lot of us, we have this whole pride of, oh, I can't let people see me struggle. We have this whole pride of, I can't admit that I'm not the best, that other people are better than me, that other people know more than me, right? I can't ask for help. And one of the crucial things, I'll never forget it, guys. I'll never forget it. When my counselor told me that I would never get into medical school, right? You, you, get, you get bad news like this, right? So what do you do? You call the ones you love when this tragedy strikes. And so I'm told like, oh my gosh, my medical future is over and I'm doubting myself in this moment and it was so amazing I could almost I get emotional right now just even thinking about it but I called I was in my in my dorm and I called my mom and I was like hey mom oh you won't believe this I won't be able to get to medical school it's like this, this terrible tragedy and my mom was like what do you mean and she, I'm, like, I'm like listen like I'm just I'm not a good student it's just impossible for me to get the A's and I need the A's to get to medical school and she was like well it can't be impossible because other students are getting A's why don't you go ask them what they're doing and then do what they're doing and I, at first I was mad about it right she and my mom actually ended the conversation she was at work right because my parents are working people and so so she hung the phone up on me. She said, I gotta work. But, and I was freaking mad. If she hadn't hung the phone up, I probably would have hung the phone up, right? I was mad. But I was like, after, as it like set in, I was like, gosh darn it, she's exactly right. Here I am, right? This 18 year old in college, I'm trying to be Joe Cool. Right, I'm trying to wear my nice clothes to class. I'm trying to always act like I know everything, right? I'm, oh, I'm too cool to pay attention. Oh, I don't be studying, oh, I'm here and there. I'm trying to be all these things instead of being what I really want to be, which is excellent. I'm just, instead of trying to look like I belong, I need to actually make sure I do belong. And so what I did was I literally not exaggerating, not joking, not nothing. I went to these high performing students and it was easy to find because of the students who were at office hours, right? <laughs> so I started going to office hours and I, at first I didn't even ask questions. I literally just sat back like a, like a stalker, like that, like that show you that my wife Shannon tried to have me watch. I turned that crap off after two episodes. I felt like this is ridiculous. We're promoting the stalker stuff, but I was that stalker. I would go sit in office hours and I would literally just watch and study. And I would listen about things they were talking about, what way they were talking about the material and what was going to be on the test. And then how they were getting explanations. The intelligence of their questions, how even their questions were better than the questions I was asking. And so I would listen to all these and I would study them. And then I actually started approaching them, hey, listen, you know, I'm struggling in this class, I'm in danger of failing, I see you're getting a really good grade. Is there any way you can give me some pointers, some strategies of how you go about things? And so I started taking all these little pieces, not from one student, not from two students, from all the students, from all my different classes. I said, oh, you do this? Okay, you do this. Okay, well, this person says notes this way, this person takes notes this way. Okay, well, then what's the best of both those note systems? Okay, boom. And then I'm gonna do some research on note taking, and I'm gonna elevate that. And I'm gonna bring all these things together. And through all this crowdsourcing, all this information, right, between research articles, between talking to students, between trial and error and practicing things and seeing what worked for me, what was amazing was the output from that was a complete system that allowed me to not only do well in my classes and get the A's, which was what I was hoping for, but something even better came out of it. Because I had crowdsourced all the best stuff, not only was I able to get the A's, but I was able to get the A's without the stress. The A's, right, I was certain, I knew exactly, I knew how to exactly how to get to the high yield material. I was able to get the A's with less time spent studying, because I knew what was gonna be in the test. So I didn't have to study all this useless stuff. I was able to get at it, I knew how to break down materials, and I had so much great information, so I could attack, I could take it to classes. The classes didn't stand a chance, they were a victim. I was victimizing the test. I was victimizing these classes. I was victimizing the curve, 
right? You guys have seen my shirt, MCAT Murderer, I mean that. I look at Tess as an obstacle in my way. They are the dragon that is keeping me from my princess in the tower. I must slay that dragon to get my spoils, my riches, all the gold of the land. And so I literally go out there and I attempt to destroy exams and I was able to do it by doing all this. And so as I say this, I say Cat William because he's 300 comedians and I say I want all these students, how many of you guys are really doing the work to figure out what success is in your desired field. How many of you guys are actually going in depth, not sitting on Reddit, not sitting on SDN, how many of you guys are really getting out there and talking to real experts about your dreams? How many of you are fully well versed in what it takes to be successful as a pre-med, as a student, as a medical student, as a doctor? Are you doing the work? Are you doing that hard work of watching the people more successful than you? Or are you pretending to be successful? That's what it takes, right? For me, I took all of that stuff, right? Because I said I wanted to help students. And I put everything there is to know about studying. And I chiseled away all the fat, all the gristle. And I have a lean, mean six pack of a course, the five pillars of saying let's get better grades that literally gives you a complete, full verse, full, wrap yourself in a cocoon of warmth and excellence study system to help you be incredible. For my students who are on here right now, if you're watching this, if you're one of my students and you are in Five Pillars, and you've benefited from Five Pillars, comment in the box and let people know how legit Five Pillars is, how Five Pillars elevates you and allows you to be a laser-focused student so that not only are you getting the A's, but you're getting them in less time. And by getting them in less time and with less stress, you're able to enjoy your student journey. You're able to enjoy outside of the classroom with your friends and your family and so forth. And it creates this rich life that we all want, right? This abundance of joy and happiness and opportunity in our life. That's it for another episode of the Pre-Med Productivity Podcast. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, premedproductivity.com. Grab a free ebook, sign up for every webinar, and if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life changing courses or coaching programs. You have greatness inside you. Let me show you how to unlock it so you can dominate and make your dreams a reality. No excuses, just dominate.